We're about to talk about thermal energy right here, and you better be careful. Thermal energy will mess you up, Holmes, if you don't come prepared. Thermal energy is a sneaky energy. So the first thing we're going to do, this E is way too generic. We can't tell what kind of energy that is. That might be kinetic or potential, so we're going to write E thermal. We've got to take care of business here. Get serious. E thermal. Now I know what energy I'm talking about, and thermal energy is sneaky because thermal energy hides energy. Makes you think energy went away, but we know that can't happen. Here's what I mean. Here's some ground. That wasn't good ground. Here's some better ground. There we go. Ground right here. And I'm going to take a box. I'm going to let this box right here of mass M. We're going to give it a big old kick. Boot this sucker. Give it a big old kick with an initial velocity VI. Now this box is going to start sliding across the ground. Is it going to slide forever? Probably not. This box and this ground most likely has friction. There's probably a frictional force between them. And so there's going to be a frictional force backwards. We'll call it FK. The box keeps sliding. Eventually it's going to slide to a stop over here. This box comes to a stop. V equals zero because it stops. And so I'm going to ask you this. Let's check out what the energy does. Initially, what kind of energy did we have? We had kinetic energy because this box was moving. It was moving. So it had one half M V initial squared. That's the formula for kinetic energy. And the end over here, when the box stops, how much kinetic energy does it have? This box has zero kinetic energy because it had no speed whatsoever. That's a better looking zero. No kinetic energy because the speed is zero, it stopped. So where, the question is, where did this energy go? It didn't go over here. See, that's why thermal energy is sneaky. It went, man, I don't know, where did it go? It went somewhere over here. It actually went, here's what thermal energy does, is how sneaky it is takes this kinetic energy, hides it. Hides it in the ground. You can't see it anymore. It's not obvious that it's there, but if you measured the temperature, the temperature of the ground would be just a little bit hotter. Also, the temperature of the bottom of the box, just a little bit hotter. We can't see the energy anymore. It's not obvious that something has it, but it's there. We call it thermal energy. It takes that energy away and it hides it. Not only does it hide it, it locks it. We can't get that energy back out. I mean, you can kind of put your hands there and warm up your hands, but you can't get that energy to make this box go flying again. That's why energy, thermal energy kind of sucks, quite honestly. It takes energy in good forms, like kinetic and potential energy, puts it into crappy form, like thermal energy, and then the energy's kind of stuck there and it's hiding. So... The question is, how do we figure out how much thermal energy was generated? Here's what we do. What thermal energy is doing, or rather what the frictional force is doing, the frictional force is taking this kinetic energy and turning it into thermal energy. It's transforming it from the kinetic energy to thermal energy. So since work is being done, because work is the transfer of energy, We'll just calculate the work done. Work is how much energy the frictional force will transfer from the box in the form of kinetic energy to the ground in the box in the form of thermal energy. So if we want to find the work done by friction, because we want to know how much energy it transferred, we're going to take the force times the distance times cosine theta equals. All right, the force we want. Since we want the work done by friction, we need to use the force of friction. D is the distance the box went. So this entire distance this way would be the D we use. And then cosine theta. Well, theta here is the angle always. Always between the force and the direction the box moved. The box moved that way. And the force was, uh-oh, wait a minute. Force is to the left because we're talking about the frictional force. Box moved to the right. The angle between left and right is not zero. That's 180 degrees, Holmes. Better not forget that. 180 degrees, so that's cosine 180. And we know what cosine 180 is. That's negative one. So we've got the work done by friction is, that looks not very neat. This one's better. Work done by friction is, I'm going to put that negative out front, negative F K D. This is useful. This tells us what the work was done by friction in this process. How much work was done by friction? This tells us how much energy the frictional force transformed from kinetic energy into thermal energy. 
So if we want to know what the thermal energy is, we've got a formula now. We already know it. Here it is. This is FKD, is how much energy the friction took from other types of energies and put into thermal energy. That's what this is telling you, because that's what the frictional force does. It steals energy from nice energies like kinetic energy and potential energy, and it puts it into the crappy form of thermal energy that we don't typically like. So if I want to know how much thermal energy was generated, it's FKD, because that's how much energy friction took. This negative means that the frictional force was taking energy, and that's what it did. It took energy, took the kinetic energy, turned it into thermal energy down here, and that's our formula. That's it. If you want to know the energy, uh, the thermal energy created by a frictional force, you can just do FKD, and the reason that works is because the work done by friction is FKD with a negative sign because it took energy. All right, good luck. Have fun.